Good morning, class. Time to learn some substitution. All right, so we're going on a wild ride today. We're doing something uh, that we haven't done before. It's a little bit weird. It's not too bad, okay? It's gonna look crazy at first, but we're gonna get through it. So yesterday, for our previous lesson, we solved a system of equations by graphing. And that wasn't too bad because we knew how to graph lines. We just graph the first line, graph the second line, boom, where they cross, that's our answer. This one, it's not in our y equals mx plus b form. And you know what? I don't feel like changing it into that. Okay, so we're gonna use these equations as they are and try to find the point where they cross anyway. So substitution. It means what it sounds like. We're going to substitute something from the first equation or the second equation into the other equation. So in this first example here, and this is straight from your lesson as well, first thing we're going to do, number them off. Okay. Hello equation number one. Hello equation number two. Nice to meet you. So what are we going to do with these equations? Well, the first thing we're going to do after, I guess the second thing we're going to do, is look for a variable that doesn't have a number in front of it. Doesn't matter if it's x or y. You can see that these three here all have a number in front. We call that a coefficient. We're looking for a variable that has a coefficient of 1 or just has no number listed. Okay, there it is. X is going to be our friend here. So if we're going to substitute, we're going to have to change that second equation so that it looks like X equals something. I'll get to why we're doing that in just a minute. But if we take X minus 3Y equals 10, and I want to get just X, I'm going to have to move this minus 3y to the other side of the equation. And we know from last chapter that if we move a variable to the other side of the equation, what happens? The sign changes. Okay, so we're going to have x equals 10 plus 3y. All right, you know what? I like this guy here. I'm going to give him its own number, or her. You can make it a female equation if you want to. Okay, so x is equal to 10 plus 3y. Now, how is this going to be useful? I was saying at the start, we're going to be substituting. So we're going to take what x is equal to, this whole 10 minus 3y, and we're going to sub it into our first equation. So we're going to sub our third equation there, into our first equation that's been just kind of hanging out, we haven't used it yet. So, what does that look like? We're going to have 4, we're going to sub in what x is equal to. So instead of an x, we're going to have a 10 plus 3y. Okay, so that's our big step here, our substitution step. So if we look at equation 1, everything is the same, except where there was an x, we put what x is equal to. Okay, so this went right in there. Okay, from here, we're just solving an equation, which is something we did all last chapter. Hopefully we're improving, we're getting better at that. So to solve an equation here, we're gonna have to distribute that four. So we have 40 plus 12y minus seven y is equal to 20. Okay, I've got my variable terms on the left here. kind of want to get rid of that 40. You know, let's move it over here. So if I take the 40 and move it over so I can have my constants on the same side, my variables on the other, we will have 5y is equal to 20 minus 40. So 5y is negative 20. And I got the 5y just from 12 minus 7. All right. Now if we divide both sides by 5, we get y is equal to negative 4. 
But wait, there's more. Okay, if we dial back the clock to yesterday or our last lesson, our solution was a coordinate. It was an x and a y. This is only half the answer. So we're going to take this answer, we're going to sub it into whatever question, whatever equation we like, and uh, try to solve for x. Okay, so I'm going to try to find room here. You know what, I think I can do it in here. I'm going to make some room here. So we're going to sub in y equals 4. Negative 4, sorry. You know what? You want to go back to one of our original equations? I like this one. You can choose the other one if you want, but I kind of like that second one. Just looks a little bit easier to work with. So now we have x minus 3 times negative 4. Uh, equals 10. So we have x, negative 3 times a negative 4 would be a plus 12. Now I want to move that over to the other side because we're solving an equation again. We've got x equals 10 minus 12. Okay, we solved that equation to get x equals negative 2. We're done. Okay, so all we need to do here, the solution is, just like in our previous lesson, we needed a coordinate. What goes first? An x, then a y. Negative 2 and negative 4. Okay, so why the heck are we learning another way to do this? We kind of already found a way to do it last lesson. This will always give us an exact answer. And, you know, it's not too bad. We don't have to go through the process of graphing. This is going to be an exact answer all the time, so it's a, a good method to use. Okay, so our solution, negative 2 number, and negative 4. If we were to graph the lines, that's going to be where they cross. All right, keep working hard. We'll make another video for our next lesson.